Hi everyone, my name is Ruchi and I'm a registered physiotherapist working in the province of Ontario. I'm here today to talk about CAPR credentialing. CAPR is Canadian Alliance of Physiotherapy Regulators. You need to get yourself credentialized in order to be able to give your PCE exam and be able to work as physiotherapist in Canada. So let's begin. To begin with, CAPR is a paper-based um, process. It cannot be done online. Nothing can be submitted online. And the package needs to be mailed to CAPR for most of the countries. The different steps that would be covered is how you can complete and submit your application, the language proficiency requirement, and the bridging course. To begin with, um, the documents, there are several documents that needs to be submitted by the applicant directly, some documents by your school and some documents by your university. So let's get started for the documents that needs to be submitted by the applicant directly to CAPR. The first form is Form A, uh, which is also known as the application form. It needs to be completed in full by the candidate. I'll mention along with it the fees details and it should be exactly in the Canadian funds of $1,486. Um, you can, you will have to mention your credit card details if you're uh, paying by credit card um, on the form itself. Along with this form, you attach your identity document. Make sure it's a photocopy, not the original one. Um, you would submit in all your uh, supporting identity documents with this application package. A proof of legal name change if it is applicable for you. A notarized copy of your diploma, degree or certificate of graduation that can be sent directly by you or by your school. Make sure it's a copy and not the original. And a notarized clinical internship certificate. Uh, different countries have their different criteria. Refer to Appendix 1 uh, for how your country needs to be worked through. This document can be sent by you or by your school either. Again, make sure all your documents are in the copy form and not original. If any of the documents sent are original, the entire package will be returned back uh, without any action taken on it. The second form is Form B. That is also the application checklist. This is the part that entire package would go together. Form B basically has the list of all the documents that needs to be sent along with Form A that we just spoke about. Moving forward, the document submitted by your school, that's Form D. So Form C is not the requirement anymore. That's why you do not send the Form C um, anymore. You wouldn't find it on the CAPR's website as well. Form D is the document request form. The candidate fills out the initial details, just their personal details, and would send it to their school for all the other procedures and the steps. School uh, would uh, attach different uh, documents, such as graduation verification form. Now, graduation verification form goes only if you have not received your degree. This form states, um, and the school mentions it, that you have finished your degree, you have fulfilled all the criteria needed to become a physiotherapist in your country and that you are awaiting your degree. Now, the graduation verification form does not um, fulfill the aim of the um, your degree certificate. So, even though if CAPR starts their credentialing process on the basis of your graduation verification form, it will not be fulfilled and it would be kept on hold until they receive your degree certificate. So please make note of that. The other documents that needs to be sent by your college or by your school are the academic records. The next one is the supervised clinical practice information, clock hours. These does not include the academic classroom hours or the practice on the other students or staff. It um, includes your um, internship hours or, if needed, the clinical hours from your rotations of third and final year. CAPR requires a total of 1025 hours for the credentialing process of your clinical practice, of which minimum of 100 hours are needed for musculoskeletal and neurological conditions each. 
and 40 hours for cardiorespiratory conditions. The other documents would also be the clinical internship certificate and the translation of the above documents if they are not in English or French. <clears throat> Again, as it mentioned, your, you need to do the graduation verification form only if the degree is not, not received. A degree, a copy of degree is still needed to complete your assessment. Moving forward with other documents, the documents that needs to be submitted by university. Official academic records like the mark sheets, statement of marks, marks cards, or also known as transcripts, it needs to be sent by university in a sealed and stepped envelope directly to CAPR. If this document in particular is sent by your college or by you, it would not be accepted. The documents that we spoke about of that needs to be submitted by your school, if you, the candidate, sends them, they would still not be accepted. Moving forward, the language proficiency criteria. CAPR recently came up with some changes uh, that are applicable from April 1st, 2023. So besides accepting for what they were accepting in the past, they have some different criteria that they are still accepting. And CAPR is now accepting language proficiency uh, tests that are also conducted by uh, I, or required by IRCC, that's Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada. Those tests include CELPIP General, IELTS General, TEF Canada, and TCF Canada. Please make note here, IELTS General is accepted, but even the academics is accepted. These are the scores that are acceptable. These scores apply from April 1, 2023. So if you are someone who um, did not give their uh, IELTS exam before April 1st, 2023 and have not submitted their application before April 1st, 2023, you fall under the new criteria. So these are the scores that would apply if you are to give your um, language proficiency exam. Moving forward, the bridging courses. <clears throat> the purpose for bridging course is for the internationally trained physiotherapist to understand the functioning of the healthcare system in Canada. If you are an internationally trained physiotherapist and is not aware about how the healthcare system works in Canada, this is for you. And this is a mandatory criteria for every internationally trained physiotherapist. This course goes for about six to nine weeks, um, most tentatively up to six weeks. It's a self-paced course and done virtually. It can be done either with the University of Toronto or the University of Alberta. You can look at the details on the respective uh, websites of these colleges. And um, this uh, bridging course can either be done while your credentialing has already started or before you do it. This uh, you do not have to wait to finish with this course to get started with the credentialing process. So you can always send in your documents, get started and do this course side by side. Besides this, once you send in all your documents to CAPR, it takes up to 20 to 24 weeks to finish your credentialing process if all the documents sent in are correct and accepted. Um, your uh, you would always be uh, you would receive an email with the steps that are going on and if if any of your documents were accepted or rejected by CAPR once they reach to your file. This information was brought to you by PCE File Frontier exclusively. If you have any questions or concerns regarding anything about your CAP credentialing process or your PCE file or your PCE journey, feel free to reach out to us. You can always send us an email to support at pcefilefrontier.com. Thank you, and I hope this information helps you. All the best. <laughs>